the moment? Well, we know that this virus is 70% more infectious to staff that are uh, looking after patients. And we're aware that the fluid repair and surgical masks that we're given to wear um, in hospitals at the moment doesn't protect against the smaller infective aerosols. And we've all seen the government's video outlining the risk of the infective aerosols in the air cause. Nurses do not have the opportunity to socially distance. They have to uh, provide care up close. And we are concerned that the government's guidance gives no reference to this. In fact, the last guidance out by the government said that individual hospitals could decide. And if they chose to give higher masks, a higher level of protection, they needed to do risk assessments. We're saying that this isn't good enough because we know that since the last week in December to the first week in January, 22% more frontline workers were off sick. Um, the, the, the kind of daily risk that your uh, colleagues, your fellow nurses and other medical professionals run is a, kind of a, a very humbling thing for anyone who has seen the work that's going on in hospitals and other health settings at the moment. What is it, though, that the, uh, the trusts, are, uh, what calculation are trusts making? Because some are clearly deciding to provide these masks, or at least in certain areas, to certain staff. Others aren't providing them at all. And I just wonder what you think is that the calculation they're making that you think is wrong. Well, what I think is that those that are providing staff with a higher level, so the FFP3 or the FFP2, which stops us inhaling those small aerosols, are making a choice to protect their staff. But at the moment, the government stance allows a postcode lottery. So you could be working in a, in a trust next door to an, another trust in another borough and you're afforded a lower protection. And what I'm concerned about is that any suggestion, and they're, they're very quick to suggest that nursing staff are picking up this variant, this 70% this more infectious variant, uh, because they're not following the infection control and prevention rules. And I think that, that, that we need to examine this because this is happening because of the new variant and perhaps a dangerous shortage of the right equipment. When you talk about dangerous shortage, I mean, presumably, whether or not there were a shortage, these particular masks are more expensive than the standard masks that, that nurses and doctors are using. But that's not a reason for not doing this, but I wonder whether that it has to be a calculation, at least for individual trusts. Well, my response to that is how dare they. Nurses put their lives on the line every single day as frontline workers. And actually, the cost of a mask is has got to be minuscule um, to what it costs when somebody is absent from work and not able to deliver the care. Please remember, we went into this pandemic with 40,000 nurses short. And actually, we have continued for the last nine months, in spite of the shortages, in spite of the sickness, in spite of the dangers of taking it home to our friends and family um, that live with us. And so I would urge the government to take all of that into consideration and enable nurses to do their work in a protected way. And Dave, I want to let me ask you very finally and briefly, since I put this question to the BMA as well. Do you think that nurses should receive both their doses of uh, the COVID vaccine as a priority within, let's say, the six weeks that the BMA and the, the, World, the World Health Organization recommend? Well, I think, you know, we can't, why we, I truly understand the rationale, uh, we can't pick and choose. Um, the, the coverage guidance and um, you know if we are really following the science then we have to do the right thing so I understand the rationale and it's for the government really to and the scientists to decide if there is any drop in the level of protection if we wait longer to get the second vaccine. Dame Donna Kinnear who is the um, Chief Executive of the Royal College of Nursing thank you so much for speaking to us here on BBC News this lunch.